This time it's five classic Yamaha two-stroke tiddlers. These days Yamaha is mostly known for its large capacity four strokes of either parallel twin layout, triple layout or of course in line four. But there was a time when Yamaha really earned their bread and butter selling smaller capacity two stroke machines, with many of the machines featuring engines of less than 250cc. And of course their mopeds were particularly popular. So let's look back now at five of Yamaha's smaller capacity two strokes. I'm not going to include the FS1E here, because most people include it. I've used it in a lot of videos too, so it's nice if we look at some machines that are a little bit different than the norm. The YL1 The Yamaha YL1 was introduced in 1966 and used a parallel twin engine of 100cc. Incidentally there was a 90cc version for the Japanese market. But in 100cc form the bike made 9.5 horsepower at 8,500 rpm. Not bad for a small two-stroke with piston ported induction. The bike was one of the first Yamahas to feature a throttle control lubrication system which they dubbed as Auto Lube. Now, contrary to popular belief, they weren't really the inventors of this system, and the system actually dates back way into the 1930s and the Velocet GTP250. But in reality, this takes nothing away from Yamaha because their auto loop system is very effective. The bike had conventional drum brakes front and rear, and on release made use of 6 volt electrics, although a later deluxe model would feature 12 volt electrics and an electric start. The bike made use of a German inspired pressed steel frame, and is physically very small. So if you're on the taller side, it's probably not the perfect bike, really. The tan cylinders made use of a boring stroke of 38 by 43, and the machine also used quite aggressive timing. As a result, it was rather peaky, only 1,000 horsepower shy of peak power at 7,500 rpm. But the engine was very smooth and was capable of top speeds of around 60 miles an hour. On the domestic side, the bike made use of a small crankshaft-mounted clutch system. This was prone to overheating because of its small diameter and was also rather grabby when in use. But despite being built down to a budget, the bike handled surprisingly well by Japanese standards and was generally very competent. As a result, the YL1 was a strong seller before being deleted in 1971. The RD125 Twin In the early days of Grand Prix racing, no matter what capacity the bike was, you could have pretty much as many cylinders as you liked. Hence the Gutsy V8 and things like V4125s. However, by the 1970s, the number of cylinders was reduced, with the aim of cutting costs and of course encouraging competition. 125s at that time, however, still had two cylinder engines. Hence the RD125 was often marketed as something of a Grand Prix replica. And after all, what 17 year old in the UK didn't want a Grand Prix replica? The early models featured fairly curvaceous, pretty much standard 70s styling. Later models with their coffin tanks were rather more slab sided. Both generations of bikes featured a disc brake at the front. Both later and earlier models featured spoke wheels, or these would later be replaced by cast wheels towards the end of coffin tank production. The engine was an air cooled parallel twin with reed valve induction of 124cc with a bore and stroke of 43 by 43. Compression ratio was 6.8 to 1 and peak power was acclaimed 17 horsepower or 12.4 kilowatts at 8,500 rpm. This was then transmitted to a 5-speed gearbox to give a claimed top speed of around 80 miles an hour. The bike was also available as a 200cc model and unfortunately the two bikes shared common chassis parts so the 125 was rather heavy, by the standards of the time at least, at 115 kilos or 255 pounds making it somewhat heavier than Honda's CB125 Twin. On the plus side however, the 125 engine of the Yamaha was somewhat more powerful and this did offset this to some degree. However, in the late 70s, the regulations were beginning to move away from twin cylinder engines in 125 towards single cylinder units. And Yamaha would introduce an RD125 with a single cylinder engine with not dissimilar performance. But there's no doubt the air-cooled single lacked the sheer machismo of the parallel twin. However, the introduction of the liquid-cooled models in the early 80s would finally see an end of the machine. It would be removed from sale in 1981. The RD80LC 
The RD80LC was introduced in 1982 as a replacement for an earlier air-cooled model and is of course fairly closely based on its larger 125 sibling although it has a lighter and more compact general appearance. The engine was a liquid-cooled single cylinder unit of 79cc with a boring stroke of 49 by 42 Wax key features included liquid cooling, reed valve induction and a 6-speed transmission system. With the little engine producing a very commendable 10 horsepower at 8,500 RPM, which meant the top speed was very close to that of its 125 sibling, albeit with lower running costs and of course cheaper insurance, in the UK at least. Light featured the somewhat angular Yamaha corporate styling of the period, as well as cast wheels and a disc brake at the front. In this time the bike was very popular with smaller riders, weighing in at just 78 kilos or 172 pounds and having a seat height of just 765 millimetres, a situation enhanced by the overall narrowness of the design. Not surprisingly given the bike's extremely light weight and despite those very narrow period tyres the machine was much praised for its handling characteristics. The bike was particularly popular in Germany and the UK and other European territories also. But unfortunately by the mid 80s Yamaha was beginning to move away from two strokes and so as a consequence the bike was deleted from the British market in 1984 but would run on till 85 in some territories and in others would last as late as 1987. And a later change in the UK's insurance system would render the 80cc bike somewhat obsolete. And this in combination with general owner neglect has made the RD80 a somewhat rare sight on UK roads today. And despite the bike's performance, it cannot be used in the UK to take your 125 test on. Mystifying indeed, considering the bike's excellent performance. The RD50 Yamaha introduced the RD50 as a more motorcycle alternative to the FS1E with little machines isn't at the base of the RD or race development range of that time. So of course the bike employed much of the same technology and followed the same styling cues as its bigger brothers. The bike used an air-cooled, single-cylinder 49cc engine with a boring stroke of 40 by 39.7, compression ratio of 6.8 to 1 and there was of course auto lube and reed valve induction to match the rest of the RD family. There was also a 5-speed transmission and the bike even had a disc brake at the front. Unlike its larger brothers, the bike would have spoked wheels initially but would move on to cast wheels later in its production life. Typical for two strokes of the period, the bike featured just 6 volt electrics, but this was also something found on the larger RS125 and 100 models. The bike weighed in at 79 kilos, so about the same as the later RD80, although of course with quite a bit less performance. Yamaha would claim peak power of around 6 horsepower, which is enough to give the bike a top speed somewhere in the region of 45 to 50 miles an hour. Although many teenage riders of course would claim more than this. Although of course not so much in the UK, where post 1977 the bikes would need to be restricted to a maximum speed of just 31 miles an hour if they were going to be used by a 16 year old. Of course if the rider was older then he could be restricted. But the RD would remain a popular bike running from 1974 right until the early 80s and replacement by the LC model. The Yamaha RXS100 The RXS100 is one of the last two strokes to be produced by Yamaha or any of the major big four Japanese companies for that matter. The machine can trace its roots back to the RS125 and 100 of the 1970s but there are some detailed differences, including revisions to the porting and the bore and stroke dimensions of the engine. And of course the RXS was very much considered to be a bargain basement machine, so it's drum brakes all round and 6 volt electrics, even though the bike ran up into the 1990s. The engine of course is a single cylinder, two stroke unit with reed valve induction. It's of 98ccs with square dimensions of 50 by 50 there's 5 speed transmission but unfortunately it's kickstart only courtesy of that 6 volt electrical system although happily speaking from experience conversion to 12 volts is relatively straightforward on the plus side the little engine makes around 12 horsepower so just around 70 miles an hour is possible making it a great first classic and one which is likely to be able to keep up fairly easily with all those chinese 125s out there
whatever bikes or collections of bikes, would you like to see us cover in a future video? Perhaps you've got a bike we can use for a test ride, either way, get in touch below. Hope you enjoyed that video, if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe, and of course, thank you very much for watching. Thank you.